Hello everyone, it's Tyler with Diesel Laptops. This time we are hooked up to a 2013 Hino. And Hinos are a little confusing, and let me show you why. So if I click on Hino here, you'll notice it starts class 4, 5, 6, and 7. It's either series 300 or 600. Uh, the reason for that is this truck's actually a model 268. And the reason that doesn't pair up at all is because in the rest of the entire planet, Hino uses the 300 and 600 series nomenclature. In the US, they choose to use something different. So it does get a little confusing, but Texit is here to help. So if you didn't know which one to pick, all you would do is hit the Vindy Tech button. We'll hit that. We'll hit OK. And what it's doing now is it is communicating with the vehicle to get a VIN number and then decoding the VIN number to figure out what it is. So it takes it a good 20, 30 seconds, and boom, there it is. It says it's one of these two. It's not quite sure which one, but in our case, they're both J08E engines, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to click the top option, hit OK, and it's going to bring me right to the right spot where I need to be to hook up to this thing. So from here, I can do a couple things. I can do a system scan, or I can go right to the connection that I want to do. In the case of the Hino, there are actually two plugs in the dash. There's a 9-pin, and there is an OBD2. In Hino's case, the OBD2 does the engine, while the 9-pin does everything else. So let's go here, and let's see how quick we can hook up to this thing and how much good information we can get. So right off the bat, there's a couple options here. This bottom one, this is for 98 and 04 emission vehicles. Ours is a 2013 emission, so it's this EPA 71013. We could do our system scan, which we'll do here in a second, which will show you the same thing. But for now, let's just hit start. And let's just kind of pop right into it and see where it goes. So you'll notice that the connection times happen fairly quickly with the Hino. And once we kind of get through the props, making sure the key's on, uh, we're hooked up Bluetooth. So boom, there we are. We're already in it looking at things. This one has no fault codes. It's a fairly new truck. We can go over to parameters. You'll see there's 111 different parameters that we can look at. Temperatures, pressures, settings, vehicle speeds. Basically anything you want to look at is going to be in here. It does take a couple seconds for the page to populate the data that's in there, but it will populate. You just got to give it a second. It's downloading the information as you're coming through it. All right. So we can go all the way to the bottom there just to show you how many other different ones there are. Faults, we have no fault codes. ECU info, it's the exact engine type, the part number of the ECU, the engine serial number, the VIN number, the model year. I said 2013, but it's actually a 2014. The truck was built in 2013. It's telling you the model of the vehicle, how many pounds it's rated for, all kinds of great information. Over on the activations tab, you'll find we have all the dealer level commands. Uh, cylinder cutout test is a big one. Turbocharger test. Scroll down here so everyone can see. All right, so a bunch more commands we can do in here. I go over to the settings tab, tons and tons of commands we can do. So a lot of parameters we can change, like uh, maximum road speed and cruise speeds. We can play with the PTO settings. We can do our maintenance reminder resets for our def fluid and our filter changes and everything else. So we'll scroll through this list. There's a popular one, the force regeneration command. Uh, customers always ask, can we calibrate injectors? Yes, you can. Texas does it on all on-highway engines. It's the only tool in the market that does all of them. So we'll go through the entire list here to give everyone a quick glance at it and everything you can do. So there's some uh, resetting some of the diesel particulate systems. You have to do that when you replace the filters or get them cleaned. So everything in there. So, and that's great. Tons of commands in there, but wait, there's more. Let's go back a menu. And you'll notice that on a Hino, there are actually a couple different ECMs. So we were just in the major one that does the common rail. There's also one for the SCR and there's one for the SCR burner control unit. Those are two extra computers that are on these newer trucks. So let's just go into one of those. You can see it as well. So again, it doesn't take very long to connect and populate everything. The Hinos are very quick. There it is. Now we're in this DPF SCR burner control unit or the BCU. We're going to find we have some different parameters that we can read here as well. I go over here to ECU info. It's talking a little bit about the burner control unit. Activations. I now have more activations and commands that I can run. And the same thing is going to show up when I go into this other one here as well. So that was the BCU. Uh, the other one here is another part of the SCR system, I believe. The DCU, the dozing control unit. So let's go see what commands we can run on that guy. And the thing that impresses us a lot about the Texas system is just the pure speed that it connects to, to these ECMs. Now, there are not a lot of pause and waiting going on in between. And that really changed a lot with the new IDC5 that came out. So again, 24 more parameters. I go over to activations. There's some DEF commands that we can run. 
and again, a bunch more settings. Those ones are the web locks. Yes, you can run those. There's just a one piece of paper you need to fill out one time in order to run those commands. And that is it on a 2013 Hino with a J08E engine. We also will do ABS. It will do transmission, but we got to be hooked up to the 9-pin port, not the OBD2. So appreciate it for watching. Thank you for your time.